Three to call the catch. Berth D will call a catch when a significant Berth submission is applied. Now Cade jumps to the back. He's got it. He was looking for Berth a rematch. Took a attempt. Was Cade Rotolo? Boy, what a sequence damage. Beautiful transition to a pass. Oh, the tap is there and it's over. Check from Rotolo. The left arm. He's trying to get the rear naked choke. Oh, he's trying to get that Rotolo team. And there he hits this. The choke is in. Is he going to be able to finish this on Isaac Michel? Is that of Ty Rotolo? Can he finish up? Isaac Michel is there. Now we're uh, breaking down a move that we actually stumbled across in our own training a couple years back, but has come back into the forefront of our minds after seeing the Rotola brothers both hit the same move in one night in one FC. Nasty. One of the Rotolas hit this on Isaac Michelle, a guy I've been following for a long time. I've never seen this man strangled, and he got strangled by a move that we kind of thought was impossible. <laughs> you know, it, it's like a rear naked choke, but the arm is in. It's kind of like a reverse Darce. It's kind of like a head and arm from the back. Um, and so here's a couple ways that we've been playing with. We are not experts in this move, but I did hit it twice on Wednesday. So we're learning. Yeah, we, we, we picked it up. Uh, I think we were... Back in our day, we were we would just sit and brainstorm things, and we were thinking like, why why does the arm have to be out to do a rear naked choke? And we practiced it for a while, and then we thought, no, this is not real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and as as always in jujitsu, everything is real with the right setup. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. here are some some setups that that we we like. Yeah, so it's being called, possibly dubbed the Ruotolo team. Yeah, I think that's fair since they're they are uh, bringing it to the forefront and they make it work, so. So from the back, we always start in a seatbelt position. Typically, this is the choking hand. Oh, let me do it this way. Typically, this would be the choking hand, but for this move, it's gonna be this one. And so if his elbow is down, crunching down, it's not gonna work, right? So we bait him with this one because he thinks this is the choking hand, which it usually is. His hand comes up to grab. And now we have this space to get a wrist to the side of his neck. From here, pretty easy. Grab my bicep, free this hand, bring this across, and choke. You see the end, his hand is always up. This is the part we are struggling with and the part that we have learned a little bit about. Yeah, so anytime I clamp my anytime I clamp my elbow down, if I anticipate that this move is coming, I'm gonna clamp my elbow down and it, it kind of stops it from happening. Now we revert to this one. Yeah. Just the regular old choke. Yeah. So he grabs our choking hand, as most people do, most people are taught to do. Come up, wrist to side of the neck, my bicep is there. It's okay to clear this hand and come over the top. Choke. So if I'm going for the arm triangle, and I don't quite get it, so I'm in this position, I'm about to go for the arm triangle, I don't quite have it. I can lift Marshall up a little bit, and I put the arm triangle while he's, his uh, body is off the mat. And it's a nasty, it's a nasty one. It feels like, kind of like a imperfect Darce. Some people say a good Darce shouldn't hurt that much. To me, a Darce always hurts a lot. <laughs> I've never, I don't think I've ever been Darced where there was zero pain involved. So. Another move that, another way that he shows it is from standing. So he's going from standing. I have this double under in the standing position, double under. And what uh, Cade likes to do, he says from here, he just punches. It's almost like he's punching the air behind his neck. To get this, the uh, wrist bone on or past the neck, bone on neck, and then he closes it up. Quick tap. Yes. Another good way to set it up, wrestling style. We call this a duck under. Duck under is our hand is here. As you'll see later, the choking hand is in the same position. Clear this hand, come under. Keep the choking hand here, straight in. And if we keep that motion going, we end up on the floor, same position. So one more time. And duck. Here. He's already tapping, so the motion goes down. In a match, we take it all over the floor. Training partners, we go a little easy on them. So if I'm on all fours here, 
and Marshall gets to my back. So I'm trying to, maybe I'm trying to get up. So we're in a turtle scramble. I'm trying to get up. And this has come back into our training after in PGF, if someone's stalling, let's say Tarek is stalling, they reset them in this position. So referee's position from high school wrestling, elbow and belly button, they say go. And so this one, same thing, we punch up to here, bicep, hand across. And if he's not tapping, we keep making plays towards the back and squeeze. Yeah, and this is great because even if it doesn't work, it's possible to go to his back. You're already ducked under the arm. So shout out, shout out to the Ruotolos for, for perfecting this, this imaginary move. Appreciate you guys. Thanks yeah, for watching. Awesome. And also, if the Ruotolos can do it, anybody can do it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh. Taipei BJJ, Targ Finn, Marshall Stamper, buy our merch. Uh, support, support Taiwan. Support Taiwan.